After recently checking out George A. Romero's The Crazies and really enjoying it, I thought I'd check out some of his other work. And I came across this film on Shudder. Bizarrely, on Letterboxd, it's called Hungry Wives, which is not a great title. The title under which it was released on Blu-ray over here and the title it has on Shudder, if, if you wish to find it, is Season of the Witch. Not to be confused with Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, but yeah, just Season of the Witch. And it is this story about a housewife who is getting a bit bored, really. She, she, she's a Catholic, supposedly has a faith, although how much of a faith is, is anybody's guess, given how quickly she strays from it. She's got a husband that goes off to work. He's work he works away quite regularly. She's at home. She's quite bored. Uh, she sees her girlfriends talks with them about mundane things, doesn't seem that interested in life. Uh, and she's becoming a little bit estranged from her daughter. Her daughter brings back uh, a, a, a boyfriend that is seemingly way too old for her, as uh, from what I can see, although she calls him kid during this film, like, like she's way older than him and it just doesn't look like she is. But it's neither here nor there. Either way, uh, she's just not really satisfied in life. And then at one point in the film, she comes across a witch, which inspires her to become a witch herself. She goes down this path, this dark path of learning to cast spells and things like that. And and trying to get people to do things that she wants them to do by using spells and stuff. And the thing with this film is that never at any point is it expressly spelled out that the things she is doing as a witch are working. And, and, and I like that. I like that. And that's not a negative it what Romero does here is he he's he plays it so that it's left open to interpretation there's there's never anything that happens as a result of what she does from the witchcraft side of things that can't be explained quite simply as something else and in fact, there are times when it doesn't even feel like something that she's done as a witch has even worked at all. And that actually she's had to manipulate the situation through other means in order to make it fulfill her, her witchcraft kind of magic. But she so fully gets into this persona of being a witch uh, that, that seems to make her come alive in a way. Uh, and, and it really is just this whole metaphor for for women needing to to get out of the home and do more with their life and have something to to kind of be to wake them up to have a passion i spoke about this a little bit recently in uh my review for mad men i recently watched mad men and a lot of the the stories in that were about your 1950s 1960s housewives who are waking up to the culture around them and realising that actually there has to be more to life than washing dishes and my husband's dirty socks. Um, and that's essentially what this film is is about, uh, is that awakening. Kind of the, the sexual awakening that happened in the 1960s, uh, in which women started to move out of the home and, and yeah, do their own thing. I'm going to give some spoilers now, so if, if you do intend on watching the movie, then move along, go and watch the movie, and then come back later and, and watch this. But um, so that the, the film ends with this this character, this main this main character, this witch woman killing her husband. You could look at it as the magic having, or the spells, the, the evil, the, the dark witchcraft having taken over to such a degree that it causes her to, to unintentionally shoot her husband, or that she's just such a crazy lady and so 
desiring to get rid of her husband that the whole witchcraft stuff becomes a smokescreen which she then covers up with lies about thinking it was an intruder and like I say it really does become a movie about women exorcising the demons of of their husbands from the home you can take that as you will um I I don't think that's I don't think that's so much a statement that Romero was endorsing so much as it was an observation of a shift in cultural, cultural attitudes and maybe fears among men as to what their wives were doing at home whilst they were out at work. It's quite effective in that way uh, in showing that one, women have autonomy and needs and desires and wants and two, men are quite instrumental in in just what might happen with that if they don't nurture it. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's an interesting film. It's not a scary film. There are, you know, it, it is billed as a horror. I would say it's more a thriller, um, but a, a slow burn thriller. There is a few moments in it when the central character has these visions uh, and she, she feels like someone's breaking into the house. And there's quite a few trippy dream sequences throughout it. They're, they're quite chilling, but I wouldn't go any further than that. There's, like I said, there's nothing in it that is just that, that really sends shivers down my spine or anything. It's more a social commentary uh, about the, the, the state of male and female roles in society, particularly female uh, in society at, at, the, at the time, during the early 70s. So... If that sounds like it would float your boat, check it out. Um, it's, it's a film I probably won't watch again. It was interesting. I, I think it deals with its themes and its ideas pretty well, but I, I don't feel like I need to see it again. If you've seen Season of the Witch or Hungry Wives, please leave your thoughts on the film down in the comments section below. Thank you for watching this video, and until next time, Cracking.